community. What happens to an individual? You know, different societies and different groups of people around the world end up taking and separating humanity into different units. Here in the United States of America since 1970, we have made the individual unit of humanity to be the person. And we have been very concerned about personal rights. And we have been very concerned about personal freedom. And we've been very concerned about what a person is or is not willing or capable or able to do. But what ends up happening is if you make the primary unit of humanity an individual person, which is a very reasonable thing to do, you're building society in an entirely different way. In some societies, the nuclear family is the individual unit. So the father, the mother, and the children are the unit that society cares about. And it is assumed that a man will get to a specific age and he will commit to a woman and they will have children. That will be the individual building block of society. And indeed, that's how it was in the United States from the 1950s and before. It was the nuclear family that was considered to be the building block of society. Now, you can already figure out that if you're concerned primarily about individuals, or if you're concerned primarily about families, that it is going to be a di very different situation in terms of the way you think about people, the way you care about people, and how you bring things together. But it goes even further than this, because there are societies like some in Europe where the individual building block of society is not the nuclear family, just the dad, the mom, and the kids, but the individual society is the generational family where the grandparents, the parents, the children are all part of the building block of society. And the reason that I'm bringing this up is because likewise in societies, are we building around individuals? Are we building around nuclear families? Are we building around generational families? I would suggest another building block that could exist is the worship community. And with the worship community, what you have is you have people who are held together by belief. You have people who are held together by a love for God. And it's not simply even the families where there is a generational tie by blood and by DNA. But what you also have in a worship community is you have people who care for each other because they care for God and they realize that God has put us together in a fashion whereby we need to be concerned for each other. And I've seen some circumstances recently in our community where there are people who have gotten care as they've gone through difficulty because they are part of a worship community. And one of the questions ends up being for us is if you happen to be really fortunate, if you happen to be really blessed, if you happen to be a person who has their life in order, is there a care that you can extend to other people who need the love and the kindness and the care in order to make it through? Are there people who are part of your worship community whom you could have an impact on being worshipped?